<sighs> Praise the Lord. Let's try this again. The devil is mad. Uh, we have tried to do our Bible study a couple times, and it seems that Facebook wants to cut us off and try to silence the message and silence the anointing of God and the voice of God, but it will not work. If we have to, we will go to YouTube, record it, and put it on Facebook because the devil does not want this word that we are about to teach you of getting out because we are going to deal with the mafia mentality of the church, the falsehoodness of the church, and uh, he does not want this word to get out. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted and Facebook was cut off. We need to make sure that we have a digital hard copy of the Word of God and make sure that we have the Word of God hid in our heart for the day and time will come that they will cut off the digital um, computers and the the powers of the computers and the internet and control what is or isn't seen and I'm afraid that too many people in the land today is gotten to the point that we are so electronically inclined to trust computers that we have gotten away from hiding the real word of God in our heart, having a digital copy close to us. A lot of our Bibles has dust on it because we've not gotten it out and read it in a while. Um, but if you do have your Bibles, please go with me to the book of Jude chapter 1 verse 3 as we open up tonight for our Bible study and we begin to discuss the Word of God. Um, so with that, we are going to talk tonight about the Mafia Falsehood Church, okay? What is that? Who is that? Well, that is anybody that does not line up with the Word of God. Uh, we are going to do another segment later on dealing with who the real church is and dealing with the remnant of the true church, okay? Um, but tonight we're going to deal more with the falsehood church. As I said in my previous broadcast before I was rudely interrupted, I could really preach this word, but if I do, I would lose many of you, and I want this to get down into your spirit, and I want you to understand what the Word of God is saying. We want to rightly divide the Word of Truth, and uh, we don't want to to lose you in the process of preaching the Word of God. But I really could, because I feel it, preach this Word under a heavy anointing. Uh, but nevertheless, in Jude chapter 1, verse 3, let's get into 
the word of God. It said, Behold, when I give you all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it is needful for me to write unto you to exhort that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was delivered unto the saints. So Paul is here writing to us, telling us that we need to contend for the faith. Apostolic people, you need to know more than just Acts 2.38. You need to know how to defend the Word of God. Not that the Word of God needs defending because it will stand when the world is on fire and melting away with a great fervent heat. For the Word of God has stood the test of faith over the years over and over and over. People has tried to stomp out the truth and rewrite the truth, but the truth will always stand. Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life. And so uh, we have to be able to give a reason for our hope, for our reason of believing what we believe. Um, the Bible tells us that false teachers would arise. They would masquerade as teachers of truth, but they would be false teachers and that they would come in many forms and that they would uh, cause many to stray from the truth of the gospel. And truly, over the years, we have seen this time in and time out. We have seen people who has uh, presented other gospels, other philosophies, except for what is written in the Word of God. Reading further in Jude, the source or concern is identifying as being what ungodly people has crept in unnoticed to the church. And to understand that we must separate ourselves, okay, from the false teaching and the false prophets and the false doctrines. We must confront the wolves in sheep clothing and call it out. We must reject any watered down thing that is not the word of God, that seeks another way except through and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father except through and by me, John 14 and 6. So here Jesus is telling us there is no other way, that wolves would come in. And we, we truly see that everywhere we look. We've got all kinds of people claiming to be one thing or another. We've got false bishops and false teachers and false uh, witnesses. And we've got people that are rising up in this generation preaching and teaching all kinds of heresies and ungodly doctrines. Um and there is but one way to heaven, and we know that way is through and by Jesus Christ. The Bible said if a man tries to come any other way, he is but a thief and a robber. So 
The word of God tells us that if we would confess our sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, according to 1 John 1 and 9. A purging of the church is coming. Now, whether you believe that or not, I don't care. But it is coming. There is a remnant of believers in the body of Christ and they are ready to call out the sins and to really pray uh, for God to do a work within the body of Christ. And I believe that we are more closer to that than we have ever realized. But there is a purging coming. Um, and we are going to have to understand there is a heart confession that is going to have to be made. That we truly take on the image of Christ and Christ alone. We must forsake our sins and forsake our shortcomings and totally depend on the Lord if we are going to be saved in this last and final hour. Because there is all kinds of things that are going on in the body of Christ that concerns me. The Lord said, who shall be able to abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell on the holy hill? And who shall walk upright and walk righteous and speak the truth in his heart? Psalms 15, 1 and 2. And we know that we're living in a time that not a lot of people is speaking truth. They are speaking falsehood. They are speaking whatever comes to their mind. I have never seen a, a, a so-called church that is speaking all kinds of things that it's okay to do whatever you want. Um, I've never seen a church to have as much witchcraft as we see in the land today. I mean, it is flowing out of the pulpit left and right. We've got men that are self-appointed bishops and pastors and leaders uh, teaching heresy doctrines, teaching things that ought not be taught and they're wolves in sheep clothing, and we are going to call them out, even tonight. The fact remains, however, that the Lord is going to present unto himself a glorious church, not having spot, blemish, or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it would be holy and without blemish, Ephesians 5 and 27. And that is what the Lord is looking for. And anything else is not of the Lord. The Lord is looking for a holy church. Okay? The church is not a social club. And um, it is not a, a place where members can go and do whatever they want. Um, it is not a place where you set the standards as the members because the standards are set by the book, okay? And we've got to go by what the book says. We are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ and we can't say whatever we want to say. We can't preach or teach whatever we want to preach or teach. We can only say what the king tells us to say as ambassadors. 
of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so none of us uh, can preach or teach or set a standard that is outside of the word of God. None of us uh, can set a format or we should not accept to exercise any more control than what we have. This church that I am a part of was purchased by the precious blood of the Savior, and he alone is the head of the church, and we are graciously made part of the last day church. And we can't set programs and hold our own standard. It must be the standard of his righteousness and his righteousness alone. Because we understand that there is a camouflage church and we don't want to be a part of the camouflage experience because at the end of the day, they are going to hear the words, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. We need not to get rid of the truths of God's word, but preach them more intensively than we ever have. And apostolics, you need to know more than just Acts 2.38. There's more in the word than just Acts 2.38. You need to know how to defend the word of truth. But what we need to do is understand that God's church is a holy church, and we need to get rid of the black lights that are in the church, the entertainment that is in the church, and get back to preaching the word of God and making disciples. Years ago, we would preach the word of God with a demonstration and with a power, and the anointing would estrange or cause people to come in. It would draw them. Jesus said like this, he said, if I be lifted up, not your denomination, not your faith, not your ego, not your title, but if I, the Lord Jesus Christ, be lifted up, he said, I would draw all men unto me. So our programs ain't drawing people, okay? We need to understand that programs uh, is okay in certain instances. But we need to understand what the blood of Jesus is. And we need to preach what the word of God says. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the things that are going on in the church. Number one, we are seeing people dividing the church. The church is using false doctrine to disrupt, to disrupt and destroy the church. The false teacher are bringing strife and not love. They are desiring discord, not harmony. The Bible says like this, the six things that the Lord does hate, and yea, the seventh is abomination. He said a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that are uh, shedding innocent blood, a heart that deceiveth the wicked, emanations, feet that are swift to run into mischiefness, a false witness that speaks lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Okay, so this is the things that the Lord absolutely hates. 
He hates those things. Uh, but we're seeing more and more people that are false teachers that are sowing discord among the brethren. And we've got to be very careful because we all can get caught up in it. And uh, when we do, we're no better than anybody else because sin is sin. And when God says he hates it and it's abomination, it is exactly that. Proverbs 6 says false teachers may sow discord, distension, and discord among the faithful. They may promote a spirit of disunity. So we got to be very careful to watch out for those that are sowing discord because so many churches are uh, closing because of discord and that is part of a Jezebel spirit. It is part of a mafia mentality is to sow discord and so we also have people that are uh, tickling years. They're telling you that you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want. It's your body. It's your choice. It's your this. It's your... No, Jesus said you are bought with a price. He purchased you. You no longer belong to you. The Bible says that we must take up our cross, we must die daily, take up our cross, and follow him. So what does it mean to follow him? It means to give up your self-will, to give up what you want, and follow him totally and completely. A false teacher who cares nothing about you will not warn you about the truth of the word of God. He will be a man pleaser rather than a pleaser of God. For the time will come that the Bible says they would not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and that they will turn away their year from the truth of God's word and that they should turn unto fables. Now we're seeing that more and more and more in the land today. People does not want sound biblical doctrine. They don't want anyone to tell them you've got to do it this way because this is what the word of the Lord says. So when we hear people preaching and teaching that you can do whatever you want, you need to get away from them. They're part of the mafia church, the false church, uh, because God has not called you to be happy. He's called you to be holy. And so we have to understand that sometimes things are not pleasant to our flesh to hear, but we must hear what the Spirit has to say to the church, and we must obey the Word of God, all right? Because we can't uh, endure the fables that are out there and think that we're going to be saved. Therefore, the Bible speaks much about um, being holy. And um, the world speaks much about being happy or good vibes. And we need to be very careful about that mentality. Um, because if we're going to allow sin in, it will separate us from heaven. And there is a hell to shun. Satan's greatest ambassadors are 
not the pimps, the politicians, or the everyday common people. It is camouflage devils dressed up as agents of apostles, bishops, prophets, teachers, and deacons. Satan's strategy is very clever. It is predictable. It is effective. And therefore, we must remain vigilant in the kingdom of God, being aware of false prophets, people who comes to us in sheep clothing, but endlessly is as raving wolves, recognizing them by the fruits. Uh, we understand the Bible tells us that we would know them that are of the Lord for their spirit would bear record with us that they were the children of God. They will bear forth the fruits of the spirit, bear forth the spirit of God. In Matthew seven fifteen and 16, we can read that. In our society today, false believers and teachers are often accept it without even being tested. We do not no longer have people who is seeking for the truth or studying the word of God. Many of us have put our uh, Bibles on the shelves and we have got dust on them and no one really is studying the truth of God's word. And nowadays we are entertaining a bunch of goats and a bunch of clowns in the house of God. No one really wants the undefiled, uh, unadulterated truth of God's word in the purest form. We can jump and shout over the entertainment, the music, but when it comes to the word of God, we have gotten to the point that we want to reject that truth. In our society today, false beliefs and teachers have often uh, been accepted without even being tested. And we have people that are joining all kinds of uh, programs and organizations and uh, we've got to be very careful of that. One of the things that they are joining is the Masonic Lodge, the Freemasonaries. And this is a very dangerous organization. Uh, it is a satanic occult. It is one of the occults that takes ungodly oaths. The Bible tells us that we cannot serve two masters or we will either love one and hate the other, or despise one and love the other. Matthew 6 and 24. These people mocks the doctrine of the death and burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. They take oaths such as the oath of penalty that they would have their throats cut, their tongue cut out, their bodies spread in the sin, in the sand of the seas in the low marked water. Now, what kind of a oath is that that you would take? And you think that is godly? That that is right? No, they are a very evil, evil, evil organization. And anybody that is a part of Freemasonry is not part of the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You hear me? If you are part of Freemasonry, you are not part of the true church of God. You are a Freemasonry, an agent of the devil, a camouflage devil, however you want to put it, but you are a wolf in sheep clothing. The Bible says unto us not to swear at all, 
neither by the heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth or the footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shall ye swear by your head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black, but let your communication be yea, yea and yea, nay and nay. For whosoever is more than these cometh of evil. Matthew five thirty three through 37. This teaching of the Lord is plain. James likewise commanded, Above all things, my brethren, swear not neither by the heavens, nor by the earth, nor by any oath. But let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay. Test all things, lest you fall into condemnation. James 5 and 12. Second John 10 and 11 says, If there come unto you, any other except their bringing this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed, for he that bringeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. So Freemasonry is not a Christian doctrine. And anyone who comes in telling you that it is, you should depart as quick as you can uh, and get away from them uh, because they are a hellish of a doctrine. They're camouflage devils. Okay, I don't care how much good works they do. They do those works to try to bring those children into their organization, those family members into that organization, and they are not of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are not part of the true church. Freemasonry is not a Christian doctrine, so we must understand that we must come out of that doctrine or we are going to be lost. We have to repent of our sins, repent of being part of that, renounce it, and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and receive the Holy Ghost, or we will wind up in hell. It's that simple. Now, another one that I want to deal with, and this is probably going to make many of you mad, is the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is not the Church of the Living God. It is a mafia church. It is a false religion. It is a hellish of a religion. Uh, first of all, Jesus Christ is our advocator. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. Okay, there is no such thing as purgatory. Let's get that clear. There is no holding place. There's heaven, there's hell. There's black, and there's white. There is no in-between. You cannot have your foot in the church and out of the church. Sweet water and bitter water does not come from the same fountain. You're either part of the church or you're part of the devil. You're part of the church or part of the mafia church. There is a false church. And we're seeing a lot of things done in the name of the church that isn't the church. The Catholic church is not part of the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So first of all, we want to deal with purgatory. 
Purgatory is described as a place or condition of temporary punishment for a Christian after death. The punishment or the purification process of purgatory is to be purged away of certain sins that is still requiring cleansing. Now I have a problem with this belief because it is first of all to say that the blood of Jesus Christ is not good enough to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So first of all, it is a false religion because it is not preaching the truth of God's word. Purgatory is no such place. And the problem with this religion is it is a doctrine that is rooted, that has no spiritual or biblical value or cannot be proven by the truth of God's word. Because the Bible tells us as a tree falleth, so shall it lie. So you're not going to uh, be allowed to make repentance of anything and no one's going to be able to pray you out of heaven or hell once you die. What you do in this life is what you will be judged by and you will be judged by either in the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ, depending on what you have done in this life. And depending on what you have done, you will either hear, enter in thy good and faithful servant, I have been faithful over a few things. I will make you rule over many or depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Purgatory is no such thing. And on top of that, it invites sinners to assume that the blood of Jesus and the cross of Calvary is not enough for the believer, completely unbiblical. This is to teach that there is a more purificational way to get saved than Jesus. It is to misguide someone or to mislead someone and it is misguiding lines that are not lined up with the word of God. Furthermore, the payments of sin was already set. Jesus paid for it by his precious blood. The Catholics wants to get rich off of purgatory so the ideal of purgatory is unbiblical but it is taught within the catholic church that the more you give the more and faster they can pray you out of purgatory there is no holding place let me be very clear with the catholic Using works to get to heaven is ungodly and it is unbiblical. And the Catholics cannot pray you out of purgatory because you give them money. Purgatory is to buy a man out of one place and put him in another as if they have the control to do this. This is a hell 
of a religion. This is a religion of Satan and the priests and the bishops of the Catholic Church are agents of camouflaged devils. You heard me. I'm not going to repeat it. I meant what I said. Purgatory, the Bible says in Psalms 49, 7, that no man can buy a soul for a ransom. None of them can buy by any means or redeem his brother nor give of God a ransom for him. So Psalms is very clear that you can't buy a soul. Jesus purchased us all through and by his blood. There is no other way to heaven except you confess your sins before Jesus Christ, repenting of your sins, being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, having your sins washed away, and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is the only way. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. There is no other way. If a man tries to come any other way, he is a thief and he is a robber. This doctrine of the Catholic Church goes around Christ and it causes saints to be confused thinking that there is another door or another way to get to Jesus. And this is one of the reasons we as apostolics teach against the Nicene Creed because it put the church in the dark ages and it killed many of the apostolic oneness Christians. They destroyed a lot of our writings and they destroyed uh, the real, they didn't really destroy it, but they prolonged the real truth of the, they tried to conceal, I guess is the word I'm looking for, the real truth. But you can't conceal the real truth. You can kill as many of us apostolics as you want, but the truth of God's word is that he has someone hid that's going to come forth and bring the word of God. He's always got a Daniel. He's always got a Moses. He's always got someone hid somewhere. And so you can't kill us all out. And the Catholic Church thought that they could kill out all of the apostolic oneness believers. And there was a great crusade uh, because they thought that we were preaching heretics because we were preaching oneness and they wanted to be in power and they wanted to be in authority. And so they are the ones that brought in the uh, Trinitarian doctrine and that is where the Father, Son and Holy Ghost doctrine came from and anyone who preached oneness was considered to be a heretic and they killed them and they burnt their things. Their crusades was very evil in that generation and they killed so many apostolic people and so you got to be very careful when it comes to the Catholic Church and the Nicene Creed. you got to know what you're talking about because this put the church in the dark ages and it, it really did um, 
do a lot of damage. Um, the next thing I want to deal with with the Catholic Church is the Bible says called no man father. Uh, Matthew 23 and 9 says, Call no man father upon the earth, for there is one that is your father, which is in heaven. So I have a problem when you are calling the priest father. Father so-and-so, father this, father that. Uh, second of all, they are worshiping saints. That is an abomination uh, to the Lord. It is an abomination to worship the dead or to speak to familiar spirits. Uh, the Bible says, as a tree falleth, so shall it lie. Ecclesiastes 11, 3 and 10. When you die, you die. You are not there. You are uh, resting. You are in the grave. Uh, until that trumpet sounds. And then the Bible said, The dead in Christ shall rise first. They which remain shall be called up and meet the Lord in the air. But I'm telling you, the Bible speaks a lot about familiar spirits. And this is the reason that Saul got in trouble when he called up uh, the prophet. And so we got to be very careful or we are going to be caught up in abominations. And that is why the Catholic Church is so full of abominations. They've got all kinds of statues, and it's adultery. It's, it's um, totally against the Word of God. And we, we know that um, we're not to pray to saints. We're not. You know, we have no power. We have no authority, uh, if you will, to to change anything. While we are given dominion and we're given power, we are given um, authority as far as dominion in the land. Uh, we're not to be worshipped. We're not to be put on a pedestal. Uh but at the same time, yes, you are to honor uh, your leaders and, and, and so forth, but you should not have them put above the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a place that goes too far. Uh, and we got to be very careful about that because it leads to ego issues and ego problems. So we know that the Catholic Church worships um, and speaks to dead saints and that is contrary to the word of God in Acts 10 and 25 through 27 when Peter came to Cornelius to meet him he fell down at his feet and worshipped him and Peter lifted him up and said stand up I myself am also a man and as they walked with him he went and he found many who had come together. So even Peter told him, he said, get up, I'm a man myself. And so we're not to worship man. The Lord even um, rebuked uh, them up on the mountain of configuration. Um when they wanted to build statues. And uh, the Lord said, no, that, that's not what we're going to do here. Uh, the Bible tells us that even the angel of the Lord in the book of Revelation 22 and 9 says, don't do that. I'm a servant just like you. And so even the angel called them out. Uh, Leviticus 19 and 31, the Bible expressly prohibits consulting with the dead. God says not to talk to the dead. God makes it clear that praying to the dead is a serious sin. You can read about it in Deuteronomy 18 and 11, 1 Samuel 28, 
1 and 25, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 through 15. I'm not telling you uh, something that I want you to believe. I am telling you what the Bible says. And so, therefore, I'm giving you scriptures to back it up. The Bible said to rightly divide the word of truth. Let everything be established with two or three witnesses. So the next thing is they say that priests can forgive sin. Priests cannot forgive sin. For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Mark 2 and 7 says, Who can forgive sin but God only? Jesus is the only way that we can go to heaven. So any religion or any doctrine that creates a way to get to heaven or get to Jesus except through and by Jesus is a false religion. It is a mafia religion. It is not the church and we've got to be very careful because there is a lot of heresies and false doctrines that are out there. Now Jesus said to worship statues or to worship Mary or to worship Jesus statues is adultery. Why do we have photos of Jesus, statues of Jesus in our churches? It's adultery. That is not the Jesus that I serve. That picture is adultery that you have in the Holy of Holies, in the house of the Lord. Those statues are contrary to the word of God. It is adultery. It is breaking the Ten Commandments. It has no place in the house of God. And you need to take those pictures down out of the church, out of your house, out of the house of worship. Take down those statues and break them to pieces. It is adultery to have them. There is over a hundred verses talking about idol worship within the Bible. And every time the Lord calls it abomination before the Lord. In Exodus 20 and, 40, 20 and 4 says, And thou shalt not have any graven image or any likeness, okay, or any such thing in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath. So why do we have statues in our homes? We're, we're, we're of idol worship, if we do, and we're part of the false church. Do not have statues of Jesus. Do not have uh, pictures of Jesus. Those are not Jesus. So many churches gives into a philosophy or a mentality and they don't realize what they're doing, but they're allowing camouflage devils to come in and they're worshiping uh, the creature more than the creator. Okay? So we got to be very careful about the statues and these pictures of Jesus and dead saints and all of those things. Deuteronomy 4 and 6 says, Beware, lest you act corruptly by making a carven image of yourself and 
forming of any figure or likeness thereof, whether it be male or female. Leviticus 26 and 1 says, And you shall not make idols of yourself or erect any image or pillar, and you shall not set up any figured stone in the land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord thy God. Psalms 35, 15 through 18, and idols of the nation in silver and gold, and work it with human hands, and they have mouth but not speak, eyes, and they do not see, and they have ears, and they do not hear, and there is no breath in their mouth, but whosoever maketh a likeness of them, so do all who trust in them. Deuteronomy 27 and 15, Cursed is a man who maketh and carved and cast metal images and abomination to the Lord, a thing made of hands of craftiness, and set it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer to them and say, Amen. That's exactly what the Catholic Church does with these Mary statues and statues of uh, different Jesuses and different Saint, listen, we are not to have that going on. We can honor people and honor their legacy, but to have statues and different things of them, God prohibited it from happening. He calls it abomination. This is a hell of a religion. The Catholicism is a false religion. You see, Catholics is a lie. And, and I see these devils. I've researched these devils. So I know these devils. And I can expose these devils. And I can call these devils out for what they are. They're part of the mafia church. The Bible calls them Babylon. The great mother of and great harlot. That's what the Lord calls them in the book of Revelation. So the Catholic religion is not a peaceful religion. I don't care what they say. They prey upon more children than anybody that I know. They abuse them. And instead of dealing with those priests, and putting them in prison where they belong, they just shuffle them off to the next uh, priesthood or the next compound, and they continue to be pedophiles, and they continue to molest children and, and all of that. Listen, friend, the Catholic Church is not part of the church. They have killed more people in the name of religion than anybody that I know. So we got to be very careful. The Catholic Church has killed more Christian men and women in crusades than anybody that I know, and they were the ones that started the witch hunts and would kill people for being so-called witches. If they refuse to obey their doctrine or obey exactly what they said, they killed them. They burned them at the stake. And you want to say they're part of the church? Come on, where is the love of God, the peace of the Lord Jesus? They've destroyed more apostolic writings than anybody, but we're bringing it all back in this generation. So if you're living together and shacking up and you're giving into marriage and remarriage, you're part of the false church. 
if you're giving into sexual nature and watching porn and watching ungodly videos, you're part of the false church. You're part of the mafia church. You have to be delivered of those things and come out among them. But I can't live if I'm not living with my spouse or living with this. And, or they say, well, we're not doing nothing. Um, so why should it matter if we're living together? Well, the Bible said, let not your good be evil spoken of, first of all. Second of all, if you're shacking up, you're doing something, I guarantee you. Uh, I don't care what you are saying behind closed doors. Um, and there is a lot of people who shacks up. And a lot of people says, well, I can't afford to live. Well, why don't you trust Jesus? Come out among them and be a separated people. Taste not, touch not, handle not the unclean things. The Lord says, so we have to come out among some things if we're going to be a part of his church. We can't be shacked up. We can't be living together in sin, doing sexual things. Uh, we can't be given in marriage and remarriage and adultery and divorce. The Bible says God hates divorce. I know it's not popular. I know you don't like it. I know you think that I'm being too hard and too critical, but God said, I hate divorce. It's the word of God. He said, for this reason, I gave you your own wife. And if you got somebody else's wife, you've committed adultery. If you looked upon a woman lustfully, you've committed adultery. Listen, friend. There's a lot of issues in our heart that we got to take care of because if not, we're going to be part of the false church. We're called to be a separated people, to be holy, to be like Christ, to take on his image, not the image of the world. Okay? Um, we've got to be holy as he is holy. Who cares what anybody else says? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people think. It's what God says is wrong. Is wrong. What God says is sin is sin. What God says is abomination is abomination. It is exactly what God calls it. If God calls it falsehood, it's falsehood. And we've got to draw a line in the sand in this generation and be bold and say, okay, this is falsehood. This is where we draw the line. Because you can't go but so far and sell out for so long that God will cut you off. He will let you believe a lie and be damned. And that is why a lot of people is preaching and teaching things that is not true is because their conscience has been seared with a hot iron because God gave them the truth. They refused to believe the truth. So he turned them over to a lie and let them believe a lie and be dead. There's found no more sacrifice for them. And you've got to be very careful because... There's a lot of people out there that is preaching a lot of things that are not true and they're part of the falsehood church. Can I tell you that we have allowed in our generation demons into the church? Yes, we have. We have pushed out the Holy Ghost and we have allowed demons to come into the church. We've allowed philosophies, mentalities, spirits to come into the church and they have taken over the people's minds. 
and they actually think that they're doing right. They try to justify their sins. That is why we need bold men and women of God who are pastors, who has a shepherd's heart to stand up and declare, thus saith the word of God and preach the word of God instead of ideas and opinions. We need men that will declare this is holiness. This is unrighteousness. Listen, there's too much fakeness in the church. There's too much jealousy and hatred and unforgiveness, and arrogance, and egos, and anger, and complaining going on. And it's not in the church of the living God. It's in the mafia church. The church of the living God don't have these things going on. For in the church of the living God is love and forgiveness, holiness, beauty, worship under God, not statues, not to man, not to anything else. But our worship is purely to God. Our commitment is totally sold out to the kingdom of God. We, we've got people trying to tell us how to run the church and They've never picked up their Bible once. They've never came to church not one time. They've never trained or discipled anybody. But yet they want to tell us how to run the true church of the living God. No, friend, it ain't a happening. That's why the Bible said, know them that labor among you. For wolves would creep in in the last days. And truly we're in this generation. That's why the Bible said try every spirit and see whether it be of God. So we've got to maintain a, a standard of holiness if we're going to be a part of the true church. We're in a time where the biblical Christianity is became unpopular. And unpopular is exactly what it is because they don't value the truth of the Word of God. We're in a time where biblical Christianity is unpopular. Yes, I'm looking at you because some of you are not getting it. Some of you are not understanding. Biblical doctrine is unpopular. But in some places, the unbiblicalness of the Word of God is became chaotic. We're living in a time where biblical Christianity is unpopular and Christianity is unbiblical. We see this even in the Methodist Church. Methodist Church is the house of Satan. Yes, I'm looking at you again. I don't care that you are Methodist. You are the devil. How can you say that? That is so evil. That is so wrong. No, it's not. Let's look at your doctrine. Let's put it up against the word of God. Anyone who practices 
sodomite, anyone who allows their preachers transvestite at that to dress up and cross dress needs deliverance. You're not of God. Set down. There's nothing godly about homosexuality. It's abomination. <coughs> now, they went through a separation. The Methodist church broke off. If you came out of that, great. Praise God. You stand for something. Okay? I'm not talking about you. But if you're still in the organization of the United Methodist Church, you're of the devil. It is the house of Satan. Yes, I said it. No, I will not apologize. I'm bold as a lion. Anybody that knows Archbishop Lee Bowling knows that he's not backing up on the word of God. A church should recognize the word of God. And the word of God tells us that it is an abomination to do that and to work that that seemeth wicked and evil and vile. A church should only recognize the biblical framework of God's definition of marriage. Anything else is sin. Thus, any church who legalizes any sexual lifestyle or union outside of a biblical marriage ceases to be the true church. Their congregation may do good works. They may give into the community that they live. They may do a lot of things, but they are a church of falsehood, a church of Satan. So if you're in the Methodist church, get out. You're part of the mafia church, the mafia mentality. The prophet who claims to be gifted of God and speaks fresh revelations outside of Scripture, mark them. They're part of the false church. Galatians 1, 8, and 9 makes it very clearly that if any man or any angel from heaven preach in any other gospel except that which we have preached unto you, let him be counted a curse. 1 John 4 and 1. Christians must test the Spirit to determine whether it be of God. That is why the Holy Ghost is needed. There's gifts in the body of Christ. One of the gifts is the spirit of discerning. You need it more now than ever before. John declares that any man that hears the word of this prophecy of this book and adds to them. God will add the plagues of the land of this book to them. And anyone who takes away from the prophecy, he will take his name out of the Lamb's book of life, out of the holy city. Revelations 2, 22, 18 and 19. So listen, these prophets and prophetess that says, but God's given me a new revelation. Careful, 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 proceed, proceed with stream caution. 
because there is no other foundation except that which was laid by the prophets. Laid by Jesus Christ. And we build up on that cornerstone. We don't need a new revelation. We just need to read what the book already says. Preach and teach that book. <coughs> That's how we get mafia mentalities. These camouflage devils. They're part of the false church. And the Bible says if it's very possible, the very elect would be deceived. Jesus is the one who comes to teach us the truth of his word. And he sent to us men and women of God who wrote in the Holy Scriptures what we are to believe, what we are to testify to. And the Holy Spirit calls us and draws us as the true church, as ambassadors, to teach and preach the word of God, not to preach ideas and opinions and new revelations. Careful when they say that they've come with a new revelation outside of what the word of God teaches. Jesus is the only name under heaven whereby we may be saved. There is no other way. Those who teach that there are many ways to God is a liar. The truth is not in them. They are false teacher. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheepfold, and any man that tries any other way, he said, they're a thief and a robber. We've got people that are in homosexuality saying they're part of the church. Listen, there is no such thing as a homosexual Christian. Okay? The Bible says like this, you must be born again. And in order to be born again, you're giving your life to Christ. You're bought with a price. You've got to give up things. You've got to repent of things. I don't care what you say. You was not born gay. You are born in the sin of iniquity like everyone else. But Jesus said you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Homosexuality is abomination. But it's being praised. It's being exalted in our society today. Our society has went deeper and deeper into apostasy. And now we're into transgenderism. And the LGBT has created a lot of confusion and gender identities and now we have children even identifying as animals barking and that's demonic folks <coughs> we've got people identifying as dogs and cats come on mentalities mental mentalities has been warped by this demonic spirit that is sweeping our land by multitudes of spirits legion of spirits the Bible said to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. You can't have sexual sin going on in your body, committing all of the sexual sin and think that it is okay. 
in the eyes of God, you're going to separate yourself from God. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. But at the same time, you yourself can separate yourself by not choosing to obey and heed the voice of God. You're the only thing that can separate yourself. Nothing else can separate you. But it is a free will choice. There is no such thing as a gay Christian. Nobody can tell me that society isn't trying to push the gay agenda to make everyone at home okay with the LGBTQT. They are blatantly trying to overshadow the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and blatantly and obviously it shows our nation the truth in 2024 when on Easter Sunday they declared the National Transgender Day. You can't tell me that society is not really pushing this. And they're saying they're part of the church. They're not part of the church. If you are a homosexual, you are not part of the church. But listen to me, church. We are to love them but hate the sin. We are to preach to them the word of God. We are to tell them about the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. But hear me. There is a dividing line. You can't allow that stuff into the pulpit. The Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. Out there in the congregation, let him come. Whoever it is, whatever they're dealing with. Because how can they hear except there be a preacher? How shall he preach except he be sent? We need God preachers, God sent Holy Ghost filled preachers in the pulpit teaching them and preaching to them the word of God, making disciples. But we can't allow that filth into our pulpits. There's a dividing line. I'm not saying that we're to hate them, but I'm saying that there are many that says that they're part of the church that's living the lifestyle, and they're not. There is no homosexual Christian. No such thing. The Bible said, any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old man dies. He gives up them things to please God. So we've got to understand that there are a lot out there who is teaching that kind of trash. They're part of the mafia church, the falsehood church. What about the doctrine of once saved, always saved? It's the same lie that Satan's been selling from the very beginning that has purged the world into sin and into death and destruction time in and time out. Don't eat of the fruit you will surely die. Don't buy into it. 
if God destroyed his own people, Israel and Judah, and he exiled them out of the promised land, who do you think that you and I are that God would not do the same to us? He poured his wrath out on them because of their unrepentant sin. What makes you think that you can continue in sin and not lose your salvation? I write unto you, little children, that you do not willfully sin. But if you do, you have the right to come and ask for forgiveness. But if you continue to do it time in, time out, and you willfully sin, there's found no more a sacrifice for you. Hebrews talks about it. Hebrews 10, I think. So we've got to be very careful about this unrepentant attitude of once saved, always saved. Because it's not true. You can be once in grace and then a disgrace. And there's many that is part of the falsehood church that is in that boat. The problem is, is there's too many self-appointed bishops and pastors. We have too many mega pimps in the pulpit. Now let's get down to the truth of the mega church. The mafia is an organization that is brutal, commits sins and crimes, and covers it up under the name of the good business. That's that's basically the mafia. That's basically what is happening in the mafia church they are a bunch of mega pimp preachers with a mafia mentality using the front of the church as their business to hide their crime they are mainly family-owned churches, and they are the world's worst. The problem is there is no accountability to anyone else. They are self-appointed bishops. Nobody consecrated them. Nobody ordained them. Nobody appointed them. They were, they were sent by themselves. They are hungered for power. They are hungered for ego they want you to bow down to them they want you to worship them they want you to acknowledge them a bunch of mafia mentality camouflage devils these self-hungered pimps is all about wanting to get rich off of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They want to charge $50, $60, $80 for their programs, come out with all the self-help books. Whatever happened to freely give, freely receive, you're a camouflage devil. Sit down. You're not doing it God's way. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm making a lot of people on Facebook mad. That's all right, friend. Then they want to start a church, and then they want to groom their son or their daughter to be the next pastor. 
their nephews as the assistant pastors. And they want them to take over the church instead of trying to find a God-fearing man or woman of God to stand up and preach, thus saith the word of the living God. They don't want to invite people outside of their family or circle because they're afraid that somebody might come in and preach something and convict, get somebody convicted and they might leave and expose them for what they are. Come on now. They don't want their people worshiping outside of their church. Why? Because they don't want to expose themselves to what they're really teaching and preaching to someone else. Got to be careful. A lot of mafias out there. A lot of camouflaged devils. A lot of Jezebels working all kinds of manipulation and control and and uh, trying to use their powers of authority for all kinds of works of ungodliness and evil. Listen, you're not part of the church. Sit down. You see their wives being the secretary or treasurers. Nobody else can be. They want to know what's going on. They want to control the money so that they can hide the money and shuffle it under closed books. We took up $1,500, but we're only going to report we took up $100. Fourteen hundreds going in my pocket, stealing from the house of God. You thief! Who do you think you are? I said it. You're a thief. You're a liar. You're a camouflage devil who needs to sit down. These family-run churches. How dare you stand up and say that you are of the Lord? You're not of the Lord. They put their brothers as the deacons of the church. Be careful what you call the church. Whatever happened to obeying God, you got to ask the bishop, to obey the Spirit of God, you better get out of there. If you have to ask the preacher, can I obey God, you better get out of there. The Bible said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Liberty, there's freedom. You shouldn't have to ask somebody to obey God. Bible says it is better to obey God rather than man. We're to be led of the Spirit of God. The Bible says it must seem right first to the Holy Ghost and then unto us. Not unto us and then the Holy Ghost. No, you're taking the place of God then. You've got your roles reversed. You need to repent and set out. You're self-appointed. I understand the Bible talks about everything being done in decency and in order, and I understand that we got to be careful in this day and this hour because people come in and ruin our churches. What well, took us 25 years to build, they'll destroy in five minutes. I understand that only too well as well. But I'm talking about self-appointed bishops that you got to go and tell him what God says and whisper it in his ear before you can tell the flock or tell the people what the Lord is saying. 
these family run churches, you got to be careful with them. They won't even correct their own family members, but yet they want you to walk line upon line and precept upon precept. They want to work in manipulation and in control. Can't nobody do anything in the church without running it through the bishop or the bishop board. Careful with this mentality of the mafia. That's how the mafia does it. Everything's got to run through the Don, through the Godfather, who's the head of the Mafia organization. It's nothing but a criminal activity. That's all you're doing. You're using the church as the front. They're dangerous. Instead of God rules, it's the bishop rules. They're strung down on lust of power. There's more about lust than sexual. There's lust of power. Lust of money. Oh yeah, and then there's the sexual lust. If you're committing all kinds of sexual activity, shacking up and all, you're given into lust and you're drawn away by your own lust. Don't blame it on anybody else. Teachers. Preachers. Lusted in the church after each other. Piano players lusted after the pastor. That's why we cover ourselves up in the apostolic church and we dress like Christians. Because we don't want people lusting after us. We don't want our good being evil spoken of. We want to live holy and we want to live according to the word of God, patterning our life after the word of God, not pattering our lives after Jezebel. Are you patterning your life after Jezebel? So many are lusting off of power, money, and sexuality. False teacher often emphasize personal gain and financial prosperity and they forget about the pursuit of holiness and well-being of the faithfulness of God's word they lack the fruits of the spirit Galatians 5 22 and 23 Paul lists nine fruit of the spirits and the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against there is no such law. Is these things in your church? If it's not, you probably are in a mafia church. Get out. Are you telling us to leave church? I am. I'm telling you, find you a church. That's part of biblical doctrine that is loving people, that has joy and peace and gentleness, the fruit of the Spirit, that has the Holy Ghost, that has a preacher that cares enough about you to say sin is sin. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. I'm telling you to be a part of the remnant of God, the true church, not the false church. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there are in this day and this generation, that are secretly bringing heresies, 
into the body of Christ. Second Peter 2 and 1 says, if they don't have the fruit of the Spirit, get away from them. Run, for they're not godly. Because we must bear the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ and his church. And if we do not, we are not part of the true church. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things becomes new. If you are doing the same old stuff that you did when you repented, you didn't get saved. I'm sorry, you didn't get it. Go back down, amen, and repent again and again and again until you get it because you're not going to do the same old stuff jesus saved you from your sin the scripture demands that we repent that we turn from our wicked ways that we are new. The Bible declares it. Bishops and pastors and leaders has a right to preach about politics in the pulpit, especially when it comes to the things that are concerning the Word of God. But our primary call is to make disciples to establish them in the faith and in the maturity of the gospel, to conform them into the image of God, Romans 8, 29, and 30. It is not to preach politics. Now, I understand a lot of things surrounds politics that is biblical, and those things we ought to address. But listen... There is a fine line between politics and biblical doctrine. Let us not get into biblical doctrine, but let us uphold the biblical standard teaching biblical doctrine. Let us be careful in our pulpit not to be sounding uh, billboards of promoting social and political agendas but feeding them the word of God for we are called to feed the church of God to feed them the pure word of God for they are bought with a price and they are entrusted into your hands pastors do not spread the flock everywhere causing them to leave because you are being brutal. Do not cause them to leave because you are preaching things outside of the word of God, for there will be blood on your hands. We're called to be watchmen set up on the wall. So when we do see things that are coming that are political, that is biblical in nature, that agrees we are to warn. The scripture demands that our attitude is to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 To examine ourselves and see whether we are of the faith. To prove all things. 2 Chronicles or Corinthians 13 and 5. He said, Whosoever or wherefore, brethren, give diligence of your calling and make your election sure. Second Peter 1 and 10. How many of us is making our election sure. 
We know what we believe. We're fully persuaded. We know how to tell someone what we believe. We give reason for our hope. Our job as the true church is to make disciples. It's not to preach ideas and opinions and to be self-made, self-appointed bishops, teachers and preachers trying to get a crowd to impress our ego. And that is what we are seeing in the falsehood mafia church. Be careful. Careful. There are many of them out there. There is a false mentality about the truth of even prosperity. This is a twofold gospel. There is a truth to godly prosperity and there is a ungodly truth to it as well. While God does want us to prosper and be in good health and he wants us to have nice things and money does answer all things. He does not want us to be so rich that we are buying jets and airplanes. That is not what the gospel's for. The gospel is not for us to be able to buy whatever we want. Okay? We have to be careful in how we handle the gospel. There will be accountability day. Every idle word, every idle deed is being recorded in the scriptures and in the book of remembrance in heaven. We will give an account for everything that we say or do. We should never sell the gospel, first of all, or charge people to come and hear the word of God. I am so against these preachers that says, oh, we're going to have a conference and it's 50 bucks. These gospel singers, oh, we have to have uh, $3,000 to come to your church. Well, you're not coming for me. You're in it for the wrong reason. Now, I understand it takes money to run these programs, these things. I have no problem with free will offerings. I have no problem giving them offerings. I understand they need gas. They need motels. They need all of those things. But when you put a set price on something, friend, I believe you're part of the false church because your heart ain't right. It's freely give, freely receive. And we either believe the gospel or we don't believe the gospel. And the Bible that I read says freely give, freely receive. Years ago, we would preach and teach the word of God and we would never charge anybody anything. Nowadays, everybody wants to charge you for every little thing. Charge you to play piano. Charge you to pay, play the drums. Play, play the piano. Play the guitar. Be in the worship band. Hogwash! Shut down! Your heart ain't right! Because if your heart is right, you're going to want to do these things for the upbuilding of the gospel and the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. Because you love God. Because you've been purchased with a price. Freely give. Freely receive. Free will offerings is one thing. But preacher, if you're trying to get rich off the gospel, sit down. You're a liar. You're a deceiver. You're manipulating the gospel and what it stands for. 
You're bringing a mockery of the real true church that believes freely give, freely receive. Let me tell you what the Bible says. Listen to this. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out the devils. Freely have you received, freely shall you give. Matthew 10 and 18. That's five. Where is your Bible that says the Lord wants you to charge $29.95 for your conference? Where is your Bible that God wants you to get money as you go along the route at a set price? I'm not talking about free will offering. Don't let's not get it twisted. I have no problem with people that we take up free will offerings for for coming and preaching or singing or whatnot, because I understand that it's part of ministry. I understand it is part of ministry to take care of your pastor to a certain degree. But you should not have a pastor that has jets and very nice cars and everybody else in the church dragging along in a fallen down Chevette. Okay, the body of Christ should be blessed equally. Your pastor should not live high off the hog while the people are struggling. That ain't the heart of a shepherd. That is not the heart of God. These people that wants to heal you for money, get away from them. They're part of the falsehood church. They can't heal you. Send me $20 and God's going to heal you. It amazes me what we have made the gospel into. These falsehood, mafia mentality, camouflage devils that says God wants you to sow an offering before he'll do this or do that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Be careful. Proceed with precaution. Mark them that preach and teach any other gospel. I understand the word of God says that we're to pay our tithes. And we are. Because if we don't pay our tithes, we're a thief. We're not saved. Did you hear me? If you do not pay your tithes to your local church, to where they are feeding you, you are a thief. You are not saved. I don't care what you say. I don't care who you are. And I don't care how much you get upset with me. You are not saved. He said, bring all of the money into the storehouse that there be meat for his house. He's not like the government. He only requires a tenth. That tenth runs the church. It runs taking care of the orphans. It takes care of running the poor, the widows, 
it takes care of the light bill in the church, the insurance in the church. It takes care of running the church vans, taking care of the preacher. Okay. That is what the offerings and the tithes are for. It's not so that everybody can get rich and just run out and do their own little thing. But we do have a lot of pimps in the church. If they don't want to show you where the money's going, leave that place. The books should be open. Don't let them embezzle the house of God's money. Don't let them embezzle God's money. Because there's a lot of preachers that are thieves. Still in the offerings from the household of faith. Got to be very careful. A lot of pimps, they pimp themselves out as gospel singers, as musicians, as preachers, as bishops. Sit down, you pimps. You're not called. You don't have the heart of God, the love of God, or the vision of God. Let's finish this up. I've got a few minutes. God has called us into a place to lead his people and to be holy. And if you're selling out church and you're in the wrong place, you need to find the right place. Because too much is going on in the holies of holies. All in the name of the Lord Jesus. Too much is taking place in the church and it's been called kingdom business. And it's not kingdom business. You should not be selling stuff in the house of God. I don't care who you are or what you are. Jesus whipped them out of the temple. Because they were selling in the house of God. We should not be selling things in the house of God. Period. It is a place for preaching the word of God. Making disciples. A place of prayer. He said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. But you have made it into a den of thieves. This is where we're at in the church world. We have a mafia mentality leading people astray, camouflaged devils, and we don't even realize or recognize what's going on in the name of our God. But I understand there is a prosperity gospel we all know that it takes money to run the household of faith. We're commanded to take care of the widows and the orphans and those that are misfortunate. We have to have money to run our church vans, to keep the lights on and do ministry. And we're commanded to tie a 10%. If we do not pay our tithes, we are thieves and we are robbers. The Bible said, will a man rob God? 
yet you have robbed me. And he said, Wherewith then have we robbed you? He said, In tithes and offerings. Malachi 3 and 8. A thief is a sinner. A thief is someone who steals. And you're going to steal from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Woe be unto you. You can't not pay tithes and say that you're a Christian. A non-tither lives under a curse. A curse that comes up on the house, not just a person. And for this reason, we have seen your whole family under a generational curse because of those who has robbed the household of faith. No one can serve two masters for you either love one or you'll hate the other. You have to be loyal to the household of faith and pay your tithes if you expect God to move on your behalf. Because if not, you're cursed with a curse. The end result is that in the household of faith, there are needs that needs to be took care of. And it is our job to take care of it. Matthew 6 and 21 says, For where your heart, for where your treasure is, there is your heart also. Is your heart for the church? Is your heart for the Lord? Or is your heart for your self ambitions, your self goals? But preach, I can't pay my bills. Where's your faith at? You have no faith. You need to pray for faith. Because if you don't pay your tithes, you're not saved. I'm sorry. There is a godly prosperity. He said, I wish above all things that you would be in good health even as your soul prospers. So we have to get our soul prospered. How do we get it? By reading the book, by studying the book, by applying the word of God to our lives. That is how we get it. So he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. So if you want to be part of the church, you've got to seek after the kingdom of God, the principles of God. And when you go to a church and it's always about money, always about prosperity, get away from that place. There, they're more concerned with money than they are about your soul. The true church is about making disciples. It is about discipleship. It is about forming you into the image of Christ, taking on the Christ image, the image of the church, the image of the bride of Christ not on prosperity. So there is a good prosperity and there is a bad prosperity. So we have to be careful in which church that we are part of, but also know which church is which. And sometimes we have to discern some things. In closing, if when you walk out the doors of your local church and things are still the way that it was when you walked in, 
you need to get saved. You're part of the false church. If your heart is still ugly, your attitude is still ugly, you're still gossiping, you're still backsliding, you're still lying, you're still lusting, you're still lazy, you don't pray, you don't read your Bible, you don't fast, you don't, uh, you're still causing division, you're still glutton, you're still greedy, you're still holding grudges, you're still uh, doing things contrary to the word of God, your sins ain't under the blood, and you're still bringing up everybody else's past and failures instead of praying for them, and you're still self-righteous, and you're not humbling yourself, and you are not meek, you are not forgiving, you're not obeying the word of God, and you're not repenting of your sins, uh, and the list goes on. And you can shout to the music, but you can't be planted and sit down for the preaching of the word of God and hear and listen and obey them that has rule over you and the word of God. You are not serving God. You are part of the false church. You're chasing emotions. The church isn't a music park, and it is not a circus, but I'm afraid that many of you are caught up in emotions and you want a feel-good religion, a microwave religion, and you don't want change. If you don't want change, go to Six Flags. The world is full of emotionalism and the false church is full of camouflage devils who will tell you that it is okay to live in sin and pretend to live in the spirit of the living God. Folks, I'm telling you the Bible is very clear that we must come ye out among them and be a separated people. Taste not, touch not, handle not the unclean things, and then he would receive us. We're going to be part of the true church. we got to be holy and live according to the word of God. Next time we talk, we'll talk about what the true church is uh, and some of the characteristics of what the real church is. Today we wanted to talk a little bit about the false church, the mafia church, and who it is. So I hope that this has helped you. I hope you have listened to it. You've got it in your spirit. Amen. If there's any way that we can help you or whatnot, please do not feel um, uh, wrong about reaching out to us. Please, we want you to ask questions. We want you to reach out to us uh, because that is how we learn is through Bible study and asking questions. We want to make disciples. Uh, we don't want you to be ignorant concerning the Word of God. We want you to be uh, sharp, and we want you to know the Word of God so that you can hide the Word of God in your heart that you may not sin against the Word or the Kingdom of God. God bless you. I hope this Word has helped you in some way or somehow. God bless.